Sairam. Welcome to the study of coordination compounds in second year PUC chemistry. We have studied various type of chemical compounds all through till today. But this is one type of compound where we have not at all come across till date. And so this becomes an altogether new topic for you though the basics of chemistry still apply on this. So what is this coordination compound in the first place that let us see. We have seen about something called as ionic bonding something that we have come across in all the lower classes. We have also come across something called as covalent bonding this also was there in our earlier classes where the ionic bonding was termed as that sort of combination where the electrons were transferred from one place to another which I mean that from one atom the electron got transferred to another atom. Whereas in covalent bonding it was about sharing of electrons one person gave one electron another person gave another electron. So as an example let me go to some simple compounds like NaCl which is nothing but table salt sodium chloride where sodium gives away one electron to chlorine because atomic number of sodium is 11 atomic number of chlorine is 17. So if this loses one electron it becomes like a noble gas with atomic number 10. If it gains one electron it becomes a noble gas of atomic number 18. So here there is a complete transfer of electrons whereas if I take an example of methane what I have done is the bonds have shown it in terms of dots. So what is this indicates is that each bond will have two electrons where one electron is given by carbon the other by hydrogen and it tends to form an octet structure and because of that it retains stability. So along with this now we are going to come across another new type of bond called as coordinate bond where here it was transfer of one electron here it was sharing of electrons whereas here it is a transfer of a pair of electrons. So two electrons will directly go to other species. Here the bonds were shown like this by a single line whereas here the bonding we are going to show it as an arrow mark. So let us see some important points about this coordination compounds. So what is this coordination compound the very first thing is what is it formed of it is mainly formed by a coordinate bond which I explained just now that for such type of bonding there actually needs to be a shift of a pair of electrons for this and then we come across certain terminologies like ion atom and ligand ligand is something new which we will study over a period of time. So these coordination compounds will be existing where you need one central metal ion at the center and to this central metal ion we may have various species which can give lone pair of electrons. This is the concept of coordination bonding that takes place. So with this concept what does this arrow mark indicate is that a pair of electrons from some species. Now let me take that species generalization as L this L will give a pair of electrons to the central metal ion. Now what is an important thing regarding this that let us see with through an example where let me take my simple example of all times that is NaCl and along with this example let me take another compound here which is a combination of uh, cobalt, amine, a sulphate compound and bromine Br. These are the two compounds I have given here this name we know very well that is sodium chloride how does it split we, whenever it is taken into a solution or so it splits up into Na plus and Cl minus very well known splitting. Now what about this who are the people available in this cobalt is there amine group is there which is NH3 it also has a pair of electrons sulphate is there SO4 and then there is Br. So in general sense if I ionize this which means that forming into ions I believe that I will get cobalt ions, amine ions, sulphate ions and bromide ions but in reality it is not so. 
So how is the splitting actually happening is, this is a square bracket that I am considering, this is the normal brackets that we tend to use, SO4 and the splitting is seen to be this way. What do I mean by this is, not all the components will split itself. Only those which are there outside the square bracket form a different set of compounds. So when I compare this with an example say like NABR, NA is the positive part, BR is the negative part, whereas in this case also, we have this to be a positive part where this entire segment is positive, this one part is negative. These type of compounds are called as coordination compounds where the ions will not be able to split further. This is called as a co coordination complex. And because this is in the positive side, we call it as positive complex. So what is a negative complex? That let us see over a period of time. So for now, the basic thing to know is that coordination compounds are those which will not split up completely into all their ions. So let us see some more important parts in this tau. A ligand, that is what they have been utilizing this word. So ligand is nothing but that system which can give electrons to the central metal ion. Some examples of simple salts, carnalite, Mohs salt, Mohs salt we come across in laboratory titrations also, where if you see the formula from carnalite, you can get potassium ions, chlorine ions, magnesium ions and water. Water can be split up as H plus and OH minus. What about Mohr salt? You can get iron ions, sulphate ions, ammonium ions because they are NH4 and water also which can split into H plus and OH minus. So what I mean is that a simple salt necessarily need not mean just NaCl. It can mean a little bigger also, bigger compound like carnalite and Mohr salt. Only thing is it will split up completely. But if you see the next set of compounds now, these are certain important coordination compounds. These two words you must have come across from even from a very young age, chlorophyll and hemoglobin. What is chlorophyll? What is hemoglobin? Chlorophyll is that component in the plant, whereas hemoglobin is the component in the blood. So you can see that there is a central metal ion magnesium in chlorophyll and big structures are present all around which actually cannot ionize. And even in hemoglobin, the central metal part is the ion. And all others that are associated with that are large structures which will not be able to dissociate in solutions. So these are the general day-to-day -day examples of coordination compounds. But in this chapter, we have to study the entities of these coordination compounds and what are their properties. So if you see in this periodic table, we had S block, P block, D block and F block. And in D block, we always came across one property that these can form a large number of complex compounds. Now that is because these D block elements have smaller ionic metals and their charges are very high. If you remember, we had variable oxidation states in D block, where say elements like manganese were actually having an oxidation state of plus 7. Which means that these people have a perfect flexibility to remove electrons or add electrons. And in all this, there are so many vacant orbitals that are present. So if you see in many examples of coordination compounds, which we will see henceforth, we will see that large number of atoms or the central metal ions are from D block elements. So this is the basic parts of this and from this, there was a scientist named as Alfred Werner. Now he studied many such compounds and he analyzed that there is naturally some sort of a difference that can be seen between the coordination compounds and general compounds. So looking back into the example that I had shown here, in this case there is an easy dissociation of Na plus and Cl minus, but in such a condition, the dissociation is only for those which are outside the square brackets. So he now termed it as those people who are able to ionize, he termed them as primary valency. We know valency, what is valency? It is combining property. So here, say for a compound like this compound, it is combining with amine, it is combining with sulphate, it is also combining with bromide, it is combining with all the three people. So naturally I have to consider all this under valency itself, but now there is a difference. 
in these valencies they were able to dissociate whereas here this part is only able to dissociate as we see here but all these people who are inside are not able to dissociate so whoever is put in that square bracket they were called as secondary valency so let us see the definitions of the primary valency and secondary valency which says that the number of atoms attached to the central metal ion in the complex which can be ionized that bromine example which is there is the one which is ionized and these are outside the square bracket which they call it as coordination sphere so what is secondary valency then those which are present inside the square bracket and you cannot ionize them so this is what he gave a basics of this part and then he brought out certain examples so if you see here he has formed a compound with cobalt amine and chlorine what has happened let us take the very first example which where the coloration is yellow it is seen that three cl minus ions have been precipitated outside whereas in the second example if you see one cl is kept inside two cl are present outside which means that one of the chlorine is acting like a secondary valency also where it is able to donate the lone pair of electrons you can also see the other two examples where depending on the number of ions which are precipitated that is the ratio that can be found so in the first it is given 1 is to 3 because for one molecule of that coordination complex three ions of chlorine are been dissociated that is how the uh, ratios are given of 1 is to 3 1 is to 2 and 1 is to 1 similarly let us see how do we determine the secondary valencies in this cases so for this to understand what we need to do here is obtain the practical analysis that we have so let us see the first example that is been uh, shown to you where it is a palladium compound along with chlorine and it also has nh3 in the case and in the example it says that if it is treated with agno3 you are able to get two moles of agcl this is what they have reported now what does this mean it means that you had a compound with this combination and with this combination when you added agno3 you got two moles of agcl how did this two moles of agcl come it will only come if the compound is projected this way pd nh3 four times and the cl2 which is there here should be kept outside that is when when you add agno3 two moles of agcl can be formed because there are two chlorines outside suppose with the same example let me believe that in my experimentation i have got only one mole of agcl how can i get one mole of agcl from the same compound how can i get it means that the structure of the compound is pd one cl has to be inside this is nh3 four times and another cl has to be outside what does this indicate it we have already studied that whoever are inside cannot be ionized who is outside only can be ionized so if i have to get only one mole of agcl it means that only one chlorine should be outside if two moles of agcl then it means that two chlorine atoms have to be outside so this is how we can formulate the molecular and structural formulas this is molecular formula this is structural formula based on the experimentations that we have so let us see some other examples also now in the second example which says that nickel and chlorine along with that you also have water now how many moles of agcl are precipitated that we have to see there they are told it to be 2 which means that the 2 cl which is there in that nickel should be present outside only then the agcl of 2 moles can be precipitated out so this is showing a formula where nickel is in coordination with water and the two cls are present outside this is how the structure of the formula can be written similarly let us see the third example now now in the third example they say that no cl can come out so what does no cl or no precipitate is coming out what does it mean the formula the way it is given is exactly the same pt cl4 2hcl 
Fourth example, just one CL has come out, which means that the formula then can be written as CONH3 four times. Two of the chlorines have to be inside and one chlorine has to be outside because if you see the fourth example, you are they are telling that there is only one CL that is being precipitated out. So this is how we are able to formulate various type of structures that have been present. So let us see the postulates of the Werner's theory now. What does it tell in those parts? So having seen all these things, he decided to put up certain points based on all these studies. So let us see the postulates of Werner's theory. So what are the postulates? So in this coordination compounds, they show two types of valency. We have already seen that primary valency are those where which are present outside here. They will dissociate. Whereas the secondary valencies are those which are inside, they will not dissociate, but they can lead to charges. For example, this is a neutral ligand, the charge is 0. Chlorine 2 are there, we know the charge of chlorine to be minus 1, another chlorine is outside. So in total there are 3 negative charges, therefore the charge on cobalt will be 3. A more detailed study about this will be done in the nomenclature part. So what I need to tell you here is that, this part which is there can be called as a primary valency. Those who are inside, who are acting like electron donors to the metal can act like a secondary valency. So let us see those postulates there. The secondary valency are non-ionizable. They are satisfied by neutral or negative. Now if you see in this example itself, amine is the neutral ligand, Cl is the negative ligand. So here both are possible, neutral as well as negative. Whereas outside it is only going to be the negative ligands in this case, but if it is the other way around complex, there can be positive ions also. That let us see. The next part of his postulate is that the secondary linkages can give to various type of uh, structural components like octahedral, tetrahedral, square planar and all. And finally, he uh, pointed out about a salt like a double salt. Now double salt does not mean just two people, it can be many people like carnalite or more salt, but only thing is everything should be ionizable. So if you see the double salt will be ionizable, whereas coordination compounds will not ionize completely. Why the word completely is used because this is also a coordination compound, this part is ionized, the one which is outside, the people inside are not ionized. So that is why this terminology of not being able to ionize completely has been used. So this is all about the Werner's theory that has been present in this and the introductory part to this coordination compounds. Let us see the further parts in the coming classes. Thank you, Sairam.